y'all and welcome back to my little corner of the internet. My name is Lilith and for today's video I want to do a little coffee talk with y'all about the time that I played the minimalist game. What is the minimalist game? I will get into that in just a minute. But I actually played it back in January of 2018, so a little over a year and a half ago. I wrote down everything I got rid of and I took pictures of everything I got rid of. And I kind of stashed them away to one day make a video about it. So that's what I'm here to do today. What is The Minimalist Game? It is a game that I believe The Minimalist came up with. I'm, I think it was them. It might have been a suggested to them. But I got it from The Minimalist. How many times am I going to say minimalism in this video? Or minimalist? So the way it works is it's to help you gain momentum on actually going through and getting rid of your stuff. So it's supposed to last one month. So on day one, you get rid of one thing, day two, two things, day three, three things. And you do that for a month, and at the end of the month, you would have gotten rid of around 465 things. I think the way they did their rules was like, it had to be out of your house by the end of the day, but that just wasn't gonna work out for me. I couldn't go to Goodwill every day, so I wrote my own rules. So the way you win the game is you're supposed to make a bet with somebody to see who can go the whole month and you bet something. If you both make it to the end of the month, you both win because you got rid of almost 500 things and decluttered a large amount of things from your home. So the Christmas before I played, I announced to my family that I was going to play this game and who wanted to play it with me? And the only person that did was my grandma. My grandma's so sweet. She's been on this channel before. Check out my vlog with her. I'll put it in a card and leave it linked down below. <laughs> so, our bet was whoever lost or whoever didn't make it to the end of the month would have to pay for Manny Petties. So, either way, we were both going to get Manny Petties together. It was going to be cute. Who won? Who had to pay for them? I'm just going to have to wait till the end of the video. Who paid for the Manny Petties? So, our rules, the rules that I wrote to be to make the game work for our life, was one, obviously, one thing day one, two things day two, three things day three, continue that. Two, we had to send each other a picture every day of the pile of things we were getting rid of. And three, to kind of help make it easier to get rid of some of the things, we had to write down in a journal everything we got rid of. And I'll show you all those pictures at the end of this video. At this time, I was only 21. I lived in my own one-bedroom apartment, and I had way too much stuff. How in the world did I get all of this stuff when I'm only 21? I didn't buy most of it. It was all hand-me-downs. I just kept it all. I never thought to get rid of it. I knew something needed a change because I wanted to move somewhere closer to the city, and the only way I could afford to was to move into a smaller place and I was tired of dealing with so much stuff. So, without further ado, here is everything that I got rid of. Day one, a Verismo. Day two, a little Mr. and Mrs. Claus statue. Day three, two Yule decorations. Two Yule and one Halloween series letters. Day four, two stockings. Halloween bucket, pumpkin light. Day five, two, day six, old words. Day seven, Halloween candy bags. Two table cloths. And a Halloween bucket. Day eight, three hot dogs. Two little kids. Two teams. One guy. One shoes. Two plates. Day nine, black lights. Orange lights. Happy black scent. Rubber Halloween decorations. Three dishes. Day ten, one Halloween decorator. One coffee drinker. A fun Halloween posters. And candle wood. Orange and orange bow. Comfort and socks. Fire and rolling buns. Day eleven, dishes. Day twelve, dishes. Day thirteen, candy bags. Day fourteen, candy bags. Day fifteen, candy bags. Day sixteen, candy bags. Day seventeen, candy bags. Day eighteen, candy bags. Day nineteen, candy bags. Day twenty, candy bags. Day twenty-one, candy bags. Day twenty-two, candy bags. Day twenty-three, candy bags. Day twenty-four, candy bags. Day twenty-five, candy bags. Day twenty-six, candy bags. Day seventeen, candy bags. Day eighteen, candy bags. Day nineteen, candy bags. Day twenty, 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 candy bags. Day tw
once I did this, I was able to move into a studio apartment just adjacent from downtown. And while I don't live there anymore, how quickly and easily it was to move with so little things. And I still had, I still feel like I have a good amount of stuff. And I have more stuff now that I live with my partner and where we both have stuff. But it changed the way that I buy things or that I look at bringing new things into my life. I think more about things before I buy them. I don't attach feelings to things as easily or as quickly. I'm able to get rid of things when I'm no longer using them. I buy nicer things so that they last longer and I like them more. When something is nice, you want to take care of it. I will wait and spend the money on something that I really want and not a just for now quick fix. And as for my grandma, I think she only made it to somewhere in the 20s. I don't exactly remember. She had to pay for the mani pedis, but that's okay. We both got rid of a bunch of things and she looks at things a little different now too. I will say the one area I am having trouble with is going to festivals. It is really nice to have little things to give away to people. So you end up getting a lot of little trinkets, which are hard to not place meaning on because they came from this amazing, wonderful place that you had so much fun at. But you also want to buy a lot of things or make a lot of things to give away to people. And it's hard to strike a balance between giving people nice things that they will like and want to keep versus just giving them things to give them things because that is part of the festival culture. I know some people in the f in festival culture do think about this because they will make really nice things to give away. I know that I've made some nicer pieces to give away and I know that <laughs> these bracelets just make their rounds. You make them, you give them away, and they just go and go and go and go and go. And if one ever comes back to you, well, that's a miracle and amazing. I've never gotten one back. But once they break, a lot of times they'll get made into new things. I know if I'm at a festival, my best ground score is an E. If I find an E, that's like major ground score for a candy kid. I also know the little trinkets and little things that might be, that I might consider trash normally, I'm gonna hang on to and I'm gonna give them away to somebody. Striking a balance between bringing new things into this cycle versus keeping the cycle going. Because that's all it is in the festival community. It's just a cycle of trinkets that touch so many beautiful people. And it's fun to think about where my candy may be today. So that's where I'm left after the minimalist game. Reflecting on it, on it while I was organizing all the pictures, I am taken back by how much I used to have. I see some things in the pictures where I'm like, oh, you know, I kinda, I kinda, kinda want that, but I know that I don't. I know that I don't need it. I know that I haven't missed it over the last year and a half. And a year and a half later, I'm more conscious of all of the things I bring into my life, but I'm also a little bit more relaxed because after you get rid of that much stuff, you want to, you want to stay minimal. And I, I want to continue doing that, but I'm a little bit more relaxed. When there is something that I want, I, I can have it, I can get it, and if I cherish it and use it, that's okay. Like, this, this overall dress thing that I'm wearing is new. I got it, like, a few months ago, and I've already worn it close to ten times. Which is, doesn't sound like a lot, but it is a lot because I don't get to wear normal clothes at work. I only get to wear normal clothes like Sunday, Monday, and then like at night if I go out and do something. Otherwise, I'm just wearing like chef pants and a trash shirt because it's a kitchen and all my clothes get trashed. I also like that now as I'm building my wardrobe back up, I have a clearer focus on what I like and what I wear 
this is a before and after of my closet, of everything that was in my closet. And I can clearly see in this after picture that my colors are, I mean, obviously black, I knew that already, but like purple, red, blue, and green, and black and white and gray, and those are my colors, and that's what I wear, and I like those combinations, and I know what style looks good on my body, what fits better on my body. So the clothes that I've brought into my life since then, I really, really like, and I feel very good and confident in. Now, I still think I have a lot of stuff because I have an entire art cabinet and hair dyeing stuff and makeup making stuff. Check out that video, link down below. But those are things that are a part of my life. Those are things that I do and I love and I'm at peace with the amount of stuff I have and I still consider myself a minimalist. So I hope this video inspires you to maybe play the minimalist game or look into it a little bit more. Let me know down below if you've played and how long you went for and how you did and how was it and all of your thoughts. I really, really want to know. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I'm trying to use Twitter more. Sign up for my free recipe emails. Like this video if you enjoyed it, if it inspired you. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thank y'all for watching. I am the Vegan Rainbow. Bye y'all.